right, let's get started. Today is all about GPS and Google Maps. Everything you ever wanted to know actually is quite easy. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, the only thing is that you have to uh, look at a particular file on your computer, upload it to a website, get a key, and then you just use the key over and over again. But I'll show you how to do that as well. So it's a little bit more um, process-oriented than some of the other Google applications um, or Google techniques that we've seen so far. Uh, but let's see what we've got going on here. Uh, so today we're going to look at an uh, overview of the sensors, and the GPS is one of the sensors, and then tracking the location using a GPS and Google Maps uh, feature. Uh, so we'll see that come together, and I have a sample application that I'm going to show you that's going to put it together in terms of the GPS features. So the overview of the sensors, Android sensor platform, and how to use it. Um, there's a bunch of goodies in there. There are hardware compatibility, uh, compatibilities made available to programmers so that you can contact and look at the, like the contact list or you can go through the market and you can make a, an app to go into the market. You can make an app to use the GPS features is what we're going to see today. And, um, or anything, the camera, um, text messaging. Actually, we looked at text messaging last week, so we know we can do that. It's an open source platform. And uh, <coughs> I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. Uh, here's some of the features. And these are some of the lists uh, that I'm going to go through as we go get uh, further through the course. But the camera actually works in the current emulators. Uh, and it just mimics the camera that's on your computer. If you're running it from the emulator. Otherwise, it pulls the camera resource. So a class that enables your application to interact with the camera, snap a picture, acquire images, preview uh, a screen, modify parameters. Um, basically, all the camera app operations are available through an API. Also, the sensors. Uh, so a class representing the sensor, you get a uh, get sensor list um, to get a list of the available sensors. What are the sensors? Well, phone move to the left, move to the right, upside down phone ringing, phone not ringing, um, all sorts of different things that could happen in terms of the, the, the life of the phone. Um, a sensor manager is just a class that permits access to the sensors available within the platform, within the Android platform. And we have the sensor event listener, <coughs> which is an interface used for receiving notifications or events, from not notifications from events from uh, the sensor manager. A uh, sensor event itself, representing the event, holds the information, what was received, what uh, information, with the orientation, um, timestamp, accuracy, all those sorts of different information that's stored, uh, that's captured from the individual events. Media recorder, uh, used to record media samples. Um, you can also have access to that, so you can... Um, you know, there's a lot of apps out there actually that do um, voice to text, you know, um, or they do voice recording. And it's from the microphone, uh, which is, you know, the multimedia media recorder um, that's going to record voice or project voice, play a music multimedia file or something of that nature. So you can get at those through the API as well. There's a geomagnetic field. Uh, it's a class used to estimate the magnetic field given from the point of Earth, uh, so your location in terms of the computing, the magnetic uh, di di uh, declination from true north. Uh, face detectors, also another one, face recognition containing a bitmap of somebody's face. Locks in uh, passwords, let's say, for example, for facial recognition or for pictures. It's biometric capabilities, if the phone has it. And that's one of the tricks with... Um, basically uh, not only testing but creating um, applications and interfaces is that if the hardware doesn't support it, you can't test it. <laughs> and so you're making something for a particular brand of, you know, a particular model or you're making something for a particular phone that has a particular feature and we'll actually see today how the, you know, the, even the, even the geo, uh, even, even the maps features don't work really quite well. We have to tell the, we have to tell the emulator the longitude and latitude the location. It doesn't actually, we don't have GPS capabilities in our computers normally. So, and our, our Android um, emulator is running on our computer. Uh, but I'll run through how to do that as well. So by the end of today, you'll be able to assemble and put together a simple map program. And you'll see how the map view works. And then after that, you use the same technique every single map you use in any type of program. Um, so it's, it's all basically the same concept.
We have the sensor type or the sensor class is the orientation element, accelerometer. Can never say that word. <laughs> Light, magnetic field, proximity, temperature, all sorts of different uh, sensor types, and then the sampling rate, fast game, normal, fastest uh, user interface. So. When the application requests a specific sampling rate, um, it really is only a hint or a suggestion to the uh, sensor subsystem of what rate it wants to, to have it come back. So there's no guarantee that you're actually going to get that particular um, rate um, or whether it's going to be available. There's also an accuracy rating um, that you can set for low, high, medium, unreliable. Um, it's basically to make the user interface work correctly. As an example, if you were you know, doing a GPS thing and it was following you on the phone on a map while you were walking, you probably don't want to have it too accurate because, you know, it's going to have to update too, too it's going to take too long for it to update or something. Um, so if you set it as unreliable or medium or low, you know, the refresh rate's not going to be as fast, but uh, it's going to be more usable in terms of the application design. So simulating the uh, Simulating an Android application that accesses positioning sensors is what we're going to look at today in terms of uh, maps. <clears throat> so obviously you have to have Eclipse, you have to have the SDK, you have to have knowledge. Well, you don't have to have knowledge of Java, but you can get by with a little bit. Uh, external Google Maps. Uh, it's a library that you need to install with the SDK environment, and I'll show you how to do that. And then the map library, which is included with the Google APIs, the add-ons which you can install using the um, Android SDK and the AVD manager, um, as we'll see as well. So what we're looking at is a process, and what I've done uh, is sort of put it into a Word document, and I'll post the Word document underneath the video when I upload it, um, so you can kind of see it's a little bit, this is an older lecture set from, I think, like maybe 1.5 or API level 3 maybe. And uh, believe it or not, the Google features, Google Map features started, I believe, in the second version of the API and uh, level two, <laughs> and it's been going on ever since. And uh, it's been the same, no significant changes. So the lecture set is still relevant. However, the links, actually, the links are pretty still relevant as well. Um, so let me. Uh, however, the Word document is a little bit. I think it's a little bit easier to to follow, actually. Um, so let's take a look here <coughs> at what the instructions entail, and then I'll pull up that uh, doc, Word document, and we'll go through it, and I'll show you what to do. And if you have your computer, you could probably do it right now, because it doesn't really, it's not time-consuming. It's just a process that you have to follow. <coughs> and what you need is an API key, and the key is this long number you're never going to remember. Instead, you're going to do a print screen, or you're going to cut and paste and put it into a text file and save it somewhere, which I've done on my computer, actually, uh, because you don't want to have to keep getting it over and over and over again. It generates this key. The key gets put into the API, uh, excuse me, gets put into the application, and it gets used by the API, and the key is specific to your computer and your and your. Uh, well, your SDK and your—it's—it's it's basically computer oriented. If you're going to use it with the um, <coughs> with the um, uh, emulator, it's using your know, your computer's information essentially to generate it. So, what you do is you locate, and um, what you're what you're doing. And this is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's an instant gratification. You don't have to um, wait too long for your key information to come back. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and go through it as well when. It, uh, as I have you here. <clears throat> the first thing you have to do is locate the SDK debug certificate that's in the default directory. And here it says document settings, local settings, application data, Android. If you're on a Windows system, it's going to be in that directory. Um, and the file you're looking for is called debug.keystore. You're going to copy it to another folder. I didn't actually didn't even copy mine. In fact, let me just exit out right now. <clears throat> and uh, open up my Word file. <coughs> and this is a, this is a copy of the, oh, this is what we're building in a few minutes. So I preloaded the emulator so I wouldn't have to worry about waiting for it. Obtaining a, map, a, a maps API key. So this is the key to the key, so to speak. Uh, what is on 200%? Let's put it on 250. 
Ah, that's a little bigger. Okay, good. <laughs> Make sure this is big enough. So you begin by locating the debug.keystore. And I actually have it done for both the Mac and for the Windows system in my doc file here. And now you can read through the rest of it. I'm just going to skip to the important things. Um, so on a Mac system, it's going to be in this directory that's highlighted right now. On a Windows system, it's going to be in Settings, Application, Data, Android. So if I open up a terminal prompt and I change the directory to <coughs> Android, and I do a list, I see my debug keystone. That's the one I'm looking for right there. And we're going to use a tool that's shipped with Java to read this and interpret it. So this is the hard, this is the only thing, you only have to do this once, actually. The, the tool that we're going to use is called Key Tool. <coughs> and the Key Tool, you should be able to just to type Key Tool. And uh, if Java's in your path, and uh, you should come out with a bunch of stuff, you know, this is the syntax, key, key tool usage. And this is how we're going to use the key tool, yada, yada. There's a big old long statement that you have to, and you can just cut and paste and put it in, actually, from this Word document. And uh, it's a command that you're going to run. So most people, in fact, the instructions here are having you copy it into a different directory. You don't really have to. I'd run it right, I'd run it right from the right from this directory here. You can run it right from the, the other one. Uh, but the idea here <coughs> is um, you have to create this fingerprint that's needed that's going to be applied for this Google key. And you're going to do this a cut and paste with this fingerprint that you're going to put into an input box and you're going to get the key online. So you can use the key tool and uh, the syntax for what you need to do. This is the following command here that extracts an MD5 fingerprint. And it's telling you information, actually the, the key tool, or excuse me, the key store, debug.keystore, is information about your SDK version, your computer, your environment. It's specific to you. It's identifying you on your computer. <clears throat> Once you develop this, it comes from your computer. So all of the apps that you create can use the same key. And so the key itself gets shipped with the application gets loaded in any emulator. In fact, I've even tried it on my Galaxy tab. It works just fine. Um, you, there's no, there's no, you only have to do this process once. Okay, so if you're on a Windows system, you're going to cut and paste and put this in. If you're on a Mac system, you're not going to have an exe file. What I've done is actually, I'll just do it right here. I cut and paste and put it in. Oops. And then I have to take out the, I have to edit this a little bit because this guy is not in this directory. It's in my current directory because I changed the directory to the key store, uh, to the Android directory. And then I have to take out this exe up here. So now I got key store, list, alias, Android, debug, key store, key store. Seems pretty long. That's why I say cut and paste to put it in, modify it, and then press return. You get this lovely little private key here. This is the this is the thing here. So this is the certificate fingerprint. So once you do that, <coughs> it's good till December fourth, two thousand and eleven. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so, and that's when it was established, I guess. Um, so simply copy it. You now highlight it and copy it from your text window. If you're doing this in DOS. Um, I'm pretty sure you can probably copy from a uh, cut and copy, maybe from the DOS prompt window. I've never tried it on a Windows system, I'm not sure. Worst case scenario, you're going to have to type that one in. It's pretty, you know, they should have made this a little shorter. It's pretty long, actually. Um, but in any case, you're going to copy the certificate pr uh, fingerprint, and then you're going to navigate to this page here. And I just clicked on the, I just clicked on the URL. And uh, it's bringing up the page right now. <coughs> it says sign up for the Android uh, Maps API. And it gives you the instructions right here, actually. So it kind of repeats everything that's in that Word document a little bit. But you have to agree to it. And you say, uh, I have read and agree to the terms and blah, 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 blah. And then paste your key in that window. And then 
click on the generate API key icon and voila I've got my key where's my key my keys right here actually and I actually did this earlier because I needed to test this little app out before I showed it to you today and uh, what I did is I just did a print screen on it let me just show you I just want to make sure the keys match actually don't need that screen anymore let me minimize this Oh, that was a print screen of the DOS terminal window. Here it is. Here it is. So this is the key I got uh, yesterday or the day before when I was testing it out, actually, and making sure all the links worked and everything. Uh, I want to make sure it matches the one that I've gotten right now, actually. It's just kind of a test for me right now because I'm sort of curious if it's always going to generate the same key, and it does, actually. That looks like the same key. So if you lose the key, no problem, uh, O36WLE, yep, okay. So it looks like it generated the same key for me twice, which is nice. I already have the key saved here, so I'm going to close this one here. But it also sort of gives you the syntax for when you're going to use it, and so what I'm going to go over is when we're using it, how, how to use it essentially now that we've got it. So here's an example in this picture here that the website gives you. It's a little example of the XML layout that you get. So what we're going to use is a, is a widget called a, a map view. And map view is going to have the API key that's going to allow us to view the map. Without the key, no map. <laughs> so <laughs> and this key is only going to work on my computer. You have to get your own key. So you have to go through this process. And once you've got it, you know, just, you know, I, I basically just saved this to my desktop and uh, into this file right here. Uh, so I have a, I have a, you know, an archive of it. Oops. Uh, this is the, this is what I did, yeah. So <clears throat> I have it so I can uh, refer to it later and not, uh, not have to worry about it. Uh, so this document here is going to go through, uh, you know, that, I just clicked on that link. That's where I got the key. And this is going to show you a screenshot of getting the same thing I just showed you a few minutes ago. And then uh, the second part of this is let's see it work. So in order to use the maps, we're going to have to do a couple of things, and especially from the, um, from the perspective of privileges, we have to tell in the Android manifest. And I, I kind of pre-built a project so I don't have to do this manually. Um, and in the project, if we go to the manifest file, what you're doing is you're just going to create a generic project, same thing as we've done before, using any of the APIs past the, the second level, which is like 1.5. Actually, 1.5 works, past the 1.0 version. Most of you are on something a little bit higher. Uh, but let me show you an example here <coughs> of what we have to add. Same as we did the in the previous, um, actually, I believe it was even as far as close as last week, or the well, we weren't here last week, two weeks ago or the week before when we looked at internet and we looked at uh, loading a bitmap image into the into the uh, browser web web view we looked at uh, loading a web view and, uh, and it required permission for the internet so in this particular case it's easy to really to look at the XML layout but if you go to the permissions window you can see what we're going to need and this particular application I've loaded on two other permissions uh, because I need that for my position. And because um, the app that, that basically is going to be created today um, is just a generic map with a pin on it, pinpoint with our position. And then I don't have the zoom working. So it's lazy. But you know, theoretically, you should zoom in to the pinpoint, you know, when you have, and then you'd have a, you know, a true, you know, map, you know, functional map. Here we can manually zoom in. We can see that it's finding the location. But it's running through an emulator. And in order for the position to be obtained, I actually have to send it a longitude and latitude from the DDMS. So I, I, I have to DDM. So I have to, I have to actually send it through the debugger and fake it. Although it's using the internet to find the map information and get the API. Okay, long story short. Uh, so Access course location, access find location is giving us our granularity and it's giving us the zoom capabilities. Otherwise, we would just get the map. 
Um, so now we're getting more permissions, and these are the two. I'd call these guys not really optional because if you're going to create a if you're going to create a mapping program, you're going to want granularity. You're going to want to be able to see the the streets, you know, the, <laughs> the stop signs and stuff. You're going to want to be able to see that detail. Uh, but without this, you can still open up a map, no problem. Uh, but these are the, the two permission sets along with the internet which is required. If you don't have the internet, you're not going to get your map to show up at all. The other interesting new thing that we've added on is use the library com.google.android.maps. If you don't put that line in your manifest, you're going to be hosed as well. It's not going to work uh, because it's using an external library. And that's the library that it's using. So one, two, three, four lines of code get added into the uh, manifest. Nothing else is different about the manifest. The manifest is the same. So, and where do you stick these? I actually kind of like, there's a lot of people like to stick stuff towards the top. I like to stick everything on the bottom of it. Not quite sure why. I think it's because when it opens up, I look towards the bottom of it anyway. So, doesn't matter where you stick it as long as you stick it in between the opening and closing manifest bracket. So, <coughs> so once we've added that in, and I'm not going to save that just in case I've made some typos or something. The next step to actually using this is to create a layout. And here I've got main.xml, which comes with it. And this is quite easy as well. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave the linear layout alone. And uh, this, is the, this is the default. This is the new piece of information that was added to it. And that should look familiar a little bit. It is basically what is in that uh, printout that you got from the website there where it gave you how to use the key. Well, this is how to use the key. You're creating and using a map view. And it's coming from com google android maps dot map view. <laughs> so it is essentially, uh, it's this widget that you're putting in here. And, um, you know, I, it's kind of sloppy here. I could go like that with it. <sighs> that with it. There we go. Now it looks like everything's on its separate line. Uh, clickable is true. And here's the key here. So you're going to want to put, this is my key, you're going to want to put your key in here. So when you, when you put together that, uh, the main interface for the, for the map view, you're going to need to put your, your own key in there. So I'm going to save this actually because it looks better that way. Now the next piece of information is the uh, application, the main activity, uh, which is kind of interesting because it's no longer a, really an activity. So, <coughs> whoops, there we go. The usual imports, the package information, however you set it for your project, is going to be yours. This is the different part here. So instead of extending from activity, it's extending from map activity, which is a slight change, which means up here, you're putting in uh, map view, map activity from maps. And the imports are going to start out com.google.android.maps. All of them are going to basically have the same format to them because they're coming from what, you know, it, it would really be considered a third-party library, but it really isn't. It's, it's part of the Google Android <laughs> app, but it's coming from another party. And it's Google Apps. So the emulator that you're going to run this in is also going to be specific towards Google Apps. So this is like all of the extra stuff above and beyond the, the basic activity. So in our class, and we're still calling it my map location activity, but it's extending map activity instead of activity. We've got uh, a map view, and I called the map view map view in the uh, main.xml file in the interface. And uh, we're going to have a, an overlay. The overlay is going to be that pin that's going to go to our location. And uh, so my overlay, overlay, my overlay, this is that, it's put into another, this is actually a fixed overlay. Uh, the overlay itself is a little bit buggy in here. I took this from a textbook example, and, and then uh, I didn't finish it. I only did it, like, you know, to the point where I got the overlay to work. So uh, long story short, it could probably use a little upgrades, but this is the basic concept. And um, the overlay, in fact, the, the concept of the overlay is kind of interesting. You'll have the map, and then the map is kind of senseless unless you put stuff on top of it. <laughs> what you're putting on top of it are the, 
the pins, you know, the red pin and the blue pin and the green pin to show your location and your route and stuff. Or, you know, anything that you're displaying on there for, for the application purposes. It's all done in the form of what's generically called an overlay. <coughs> so, in the main, ex which the main XML file contains the map view, we're setting the context view to the map view, which is main. It's the only thing that's in main is in that map view anyway. Extract the map view from the layout. So we're getting it into a variable, local variable. We're going to call it map view. And we're going to set the built-in zoom controls to true, which is going to put those plus and minus zoom control, actually. Should see it out here already. When you click on the map, this is the zoom control. So without that line of code, that zoom control is not going to come on. Actually, without the location, it's showing us the uh, <laughs> showing us the world globe. Just put us here next to Mexico, I guess. <coughs> All right. So uh, after we've created the map, we've gotten it, we've extracted it to a local variable, so we can modify the map view. We've set the zoom to built-in controls, so we have that control that's going to go and show up. We can create an overlay that shows our current location. And uh, this overlay is going to be, uh, this is using my fixed overlay. And whatever overlay you create, and I'll, we'll look at the overlay in a few minutes. Add this overlay. So you make an instance over the overlay, add it to the map. So it's on top of the map. It works with the map. So it adds the overlay to the map view and refreshes it. So get overlays.add. And so there's a built-in method call that basically says, you know, we're going to have an overlay and add it to the map. And then uh, post, uh, post invalidate, we refresh it, essentially. And uh, call the convention method that uh, zooms the map on the location, zoom to my location, which is built in. So a lot of the calls that we're doing are built in for us automatically. We don't actually have to create anything outside of... Uh, getting that map key and locating it and putting it in the right place. That's pretty much all of the work you actually have to do in terms of creating a map application. And then the resume, we're going to my location overlay, enable my location. On a pause, disable my location. On a, a zoom to my location, a zoom in. Um, so the geo point is going to be in my location geo point. Make a new instance of that object. Take to get get the controller, animate it to the geo point, to the zoom location, and then zoom ten, you know, each one of the zooms. And then if you can't find a location printout, can't determine location, essentially. <coughs> so. So the basic structure. Oops, let me uh, take a quick look here. This is the overlay that was created. You can do it without an overlay. You don't need the overlay. The overlay I actually pulled from a, a uh, an example that I saw that was for a fix for the Droid X phone, which I was playing around with this overlay because I have a Droid X and it didn't work. So, and it's still not working on the Droid X. So, <laughs> long story short, I've abandoned the overlay. Uh, but this overlay is still being used. And I, it, it, the only thing that this overlay is going to do is going to put a blue pin. It's going to put a pin actually on the location. Once I tell the map where I am, I have to actually give it the location because uh, it doesn't have a, I don't have GPS in my computer here or on my emulator. If you have an emulator that is GPS compatible, that can actually generate a lan lan longitude and latitude for you, you're in great shape. But who has that? So um, usually you'll have to test it on a phone, which is what I was trying to do when I ran into the situation. Um, but long story short. The mapping, I will tell you, is a bit buggy between the different phone versions. It's a little hardware specific, and it doesn't work the same on all of the hardware. You have to like tweak it a little bit in order to get it to work correctly. <coughs> all right, so this overlay here is uh, going to basically paint a point, an accuracy paint. It's going to use a, it's going to paint a a a circle or dot or a point, I should say. Um, and it's going to use an instance of a variable that we're going to call it accuracy paint. 
there's a center, left, right, height, width, um, dimensions associated with the point that we're going to put on there. We're going to position the point on the map, just like a grid, essentially, uh, with an x, y, z coordinate, um, or x, y coordinate, I should say. So it finds from, uh, from the canvas, it'll take the map view and the location and the geo point location. Uh, which is going to be both the you know the last fix and the my current location. So you can actually follow as an example if you were walking down the street with your phone and you had the map out, it could it could basically tell you where you were from and where you went to in terms of starting location and location and stuff. Which uh, you normally have two locations on there uh, because you know you're mapping to something. It's like from point A to point B usually. <coughs> Found a buggy phone. Yes, yes, yes. So your buggy, your buggy solution didn't work for me. However, um, the rest of the code is essentially drawing the point, finding the location, and uh, putting the map indicator, and then setting the orientation of the map to that point. But it's not working. This is this half of this code. I've uh, not, I've not implemented. I've not uh, made an instance of not using the, any of these methods. So it's not really going to do anything for us. Long story short. So I'm not going to. I, I left that in there because it's giving me the point on the map. So I have to manually zoom to the point on the map, however. So that was on there because I was too lazy to, to strip it all out and just put the point on the map. <coughs> all right, so um, now we're at the point where we're saying, well, let's run it. And if you haven't figured it out already, you have to actually create a new um, emulator for it. Because the emulator for the Android API isn't going to work. Um, so if you go into the Android SDK manager, you'll notice um, in the beginning it should be it should be noted that you might end up having to install some a few things. If it doesn't recognize the com Google, if it doesn't recognize the map view, if it's having issues um, in terms of compatibility. What you're looking for is to make sure you've got Google APIs by Google Inc. installed. So you can see sort of here, actually, I'll hit the installed. There we go. So you can see what I've got installed here. <clears throat> I've got a lot of the different API versions installed on mine, but you may only have one of them. It doesn't really matter which one you have, as long as you've got the one that says Google. I've got my, my uh, there we go, I've highlighted it right here. Because it's not going to use the standard SDK. <laughs> so you can use it along with it, but your emulator's got to support the Google APIs by Google, which is the biggest difference. And this is the, usually when you go out on the message boards, you know, trying to figure out, you know, oh, I'm having this bug and I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. 90% of the people are using the wrong API version, or they have an emulator that doesn't support maps, or they don't have the right map key, you know. So, that's the big. That's a big problem right there. If you don't have that, so if you go through and you've just installed the SDKs, you want, what you'll have to do before you even start doing any of this stuff is install the correct APIs for Google. And you see, each one of them has. There's one down here for the 3.2 version. There's one for the 1.5. I've got it installed for everything, actually, uh, which is not a bad idea because you never know. You never know which phone you're going to move it, work it on, stuff like that. <coughs> so. The second thing you're going to have to do is create a new uh, AVD. So in the AVD manager, you can see I've actually got a lot of them created um, already. And I just created this one actually recently I had to test on a one because I, I found that, you know, the, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the built in emulator, which is why I've got VirtualBox in my own emulators installed. Um, but the Google Maps, it's too much trouble to run through VirtualBox. So I decided I'm going to run it through the Android emulator. And in doing so, I've discovered that uh, I needed to install or create a new AVD that supports it. So I decided to experiment a little bit. And I found the 1.5. It's an older older emulator, but it actually works better. In fact, it's running right now and everything else. My computer hasn't crashed, which is great. Um, although I did preload it before starting this lecture, so I wouldn't have to deal with it. But... Um, it does load, it's on a way low level 3 API, but the mapping features haven't changed since the beginning. So if you're testing out the mapping, you want an easy to use emulator downgrade back to 
just for testing purposes for the emulator. And you'll find it loads a lot faster and it runs a little bit less buggy than some of the newer emulators do. Um, and the API is identical to a 4.0 or you know, to ice cream emulators. <coughs> so I created this here and it's uh, of the Google. I also created an emulator for testing on uh, 2.3, which is the, you know, the, the, this is the current APS, current level that's running on my uh, Galaxy, Galaxy Tab, actually, that I usually use for testing. And then the, the latest and greatest as well, and it works on all three. So it's a, kind of a test to see, is it going to work on just 1.5 or is it going to work on all of them? So once you've created your uh, emulator, you're going to run it, and when you run it, here it is here. Um, when I started this, actually, and, uh, let's see if I can get back to the home here. It's going to give me a nasty little error message. I'm not going to let a message. It's, a, it's actually a toast message that I put up myself. And the toast message is going to say, can't find location. It's going to show up on the bottom. Can't determine location. And you might have noticed that it can't determine. Where is it going to get the location from? So if you go out on the message board and you search around, you'll see a bunch of people. How do we set the location? How do we set the location? You can't set the location. Uh, so what you do is you go through the debugger. So if you go to the right-hand side of the screen, a little, we've seen this before, actually. We looked at this for logging messages already. The DDMS. And if we open up the DDMS, we see an emulator control on the left-hand side. And on the emulator control, yep, there it is, towards the bottom, we see location controls. So this is what we did the other day, actually. I simulated an incoming call, an incoming, no, I didn't do a call. I did a text message. In the future, we'll do an incoming call, and we'll answer a call on the emulator. But I was sending text messages to the emulator a couple weeks ago, if you were there for the class meeting, uh, using this uh, emulator controller, essentially, from the DDMS to debug and control the emulator. So what we're going to do is going to send it a fake, uh, fake coordinate. And how are we going to get the fake coordinates? Well, that's kind of an interesting concept, too. Um, because we can essentially go to a, you know, actually, I'm just going to pull up a web browser right now. There's a million applications out there. And hopefully I've saved one in here. Yep, longitude and latitude. What we need is a longitude and a latitude. And we can simulate it out here and actually get the longitude and latitude by typing in the address ITU as an example, and clicking on Go. And this is a Google Map program, actually. And what this Google Map program is doing, hey, look, it's even spelled right, international, technologically. Technolog technology? It's spelled wrong. <laughs> it's technological, isn't it? <laughs> they spelt... Google Maps has our name spelled wrong. <laughs> For years I was saying technology, now it's really technological, isn't it? <laughs> All right, but that's not the point of this demonstration. <laughs> well, that is an interesting side comment. And we're, we're misspelled on Google Maps. Hey, but at least we're on here. At least we're on the map. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, so... <coughs> You can type in your address if you want to find your house. And here's the longitude and the latitude. So I believe I have actually put something similar to that. 37331, let's see, go back to, um, no, this is set to, uh, okay, so now I'm going to manually figure out, this is so big, 37, okay, so that part's right, 331819, 331819. So I'm going to type in 331819, and then, uh, oh, the longitude's way, uh, let's see, uh, let's go to the other one, 12189567691218957691218957 one, Nine, I don't know. Close enough, right? Okay, so 
you put the lo longitude and latitude in from wherever you find it from. You press send. It's sending now the location to, oh, look at that. I have a, now I have the overlay because it has the location now. If I restart this, I won't get that little thing that says, can't get location. It just got the location. I just sent it to you. Uh, so you have to send it the location before you load the map or while the map's loading. So if I clicked here, and what I don't have is the zoom working correctly, but if I zoom in on this little dot over here, well, at least it's taking me to California, at least. I'm wondering if it's going to show technology on the map. <laughs> San Jose, it's pretty close now. Let's see, we got a little closer. <coughs> We're still in San Jose. This should zoom because I put the control in there to zoom. Uh, to, to zoom, I'm going in on 10, I guess this is 10 miles at a time or something. Or whatever the 10 was. Now I've lost the pointer. Well, where should be around here somewhere, shouldn't we? Mountain View? No. San Jose, Palo Alto. Where's my little, where's my dot? Well, okay, you get the point, I hope. If I move around, this is why you want to set the zoom orientation to zoom into the dot location. I'm going to have to zoom out, actually, just one time. Where's my dot? I lost my dot. <laughs> Let's zoom out again one more time. Okay, where's the dot? <sighs> All right, well, my dot went away. <laughs> Obviously, the application could use some tweaking. <laughs> so, long story short, you want to make sure that the overlay actually zooms to the location, otherwise you're going to have the situation that I just ran into. Actually, good point. And I, I reset the location. Yep, yep here it is. <coughs> it's right there. I just want to see if it says top technology on it. There it is. Midtown, no, we're not in Midtown. I'm gonna put this in the middle of the screen here. There we go. Sonol, Midtown. Hmm. Are we close to 82? Let's see. San Jose State, Washington, Guadalupe, Guadalupe. Oh, I think it's gonna find our building. Park. Oh, look at that. It's coming close. Is this Second Street right here? Let me zoom in one more time, then I'll give up. <laughs> ah, look at that! It did find us. That's where we are. So you can see that it actually works. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And there's another. Uh, I have an old app from the last time I taught this course that actually had a walking thing. The only problem is it's really hard to walk with your computer. And the whole app was based upon the movement from one location to another. So it didn't really quite demo very well um, in terms of, like, my, uh, for some strange reason, my longitude and latitude keeps going away in this emulator as well. I just keep clicking on the send, and it puts the dot back. Uh, but um, long story short, um, you can do some pretty cool things with it. And uh, you're embedding, and you're using the same concept in every Google map or every you know web map view application that you create in terms of the interface. So let me go back to that PowerPoint see what I missed. And I, um, oh, before I do that, let me just finish up with this Word file. So as we've seen, uh, we enabled the internet. This one here is not actually having you enable the other two. This one's just going to put the map out. So this particular example gives you the manifest that XML file, which allows you to put in the, um, you know, the in permission for the internet, and then the displaying of the map on the main layout with the key, uh, which is going to essentially put the map out there. I'm not going to put the dot on there. I'm not going to put the over because it doesn't use an overlay. So <coughs> the basic functionality puts the map out. The overlays are what's putting the application on the map. It's basically putting the picture of the storefront and the, the dots and things. And so putting, in fact, you can put directions. And in fact, you can pull the map information 
and put right turn on this street, left turn on that street, and stuff. And uh, actually create your own navigation application if you want as well. Uh, so now you're armed and dangerous. Uh, what is down here? This is information that comes into the map activities.java file that is extending and remembering it, it's extending map activity and not just activity. And uh, this is nothing more. In fact, this is a small little code snippet that's basically just giving you the basic um, what to put in the map activity um, just to create, you know, create the, the layout, call the layout, and you know, is, is, is the route displayed? You know, return true or false, essentially. And once it's displayed. So that map looks like that map. Nothing. No, no, no dot on the map. So. All right. So let's go back and finish up the, uh, the PowerPoint that I started. <coughs> so um, as a side comment, the mapping is just one of the sensor features. There's a lot more features associated with the phone, and we'll be going through some of those as well. In the old APIs, um, excuse me, in the old SDKs, the emulators didn't simulate the cameras. Now they're simulating the camera, so it's actually kind of interesting to see how pictures and things can actually be taken um, from the emulator. So um, you may use these instructions. The link is the same. And uh, the process is the same. You're copying that fingerprint to the website. The website's generating the key for you. You're taking the key, and you're going to use that key in every single application that you create that's going to use a map. You don't have to recreate the key ever again, uh, which is why I would like to save it, you know, put it in a Word, Word file or a text file or something. Somewhere you can easily cut and paste it when you need to use a map program. <coughs> So when you create an AVD, um, you're going to use the uh, Google API. And uh, the AV AVD essentially defines the system image and the device settings, which is kind of like why you need to use the emulator that's by Google and not by the standard SDK that's being released. Um, although it is all coming from the same company, the API itself from Google is uh, going to have the map features in there. And uh, if you can't remember how to do it, you're going to Android SDK AVD Manager. And uh, you're going to enter in the d virtual devices, select a new one, and then um, pick, pick any of the Google APIs that matches the project type. So it has to be of the same level, um, target level, that matches the project type. So if you're making a 1.5, you need a 1.5 Google API that goes with it. So you create the project, it's quite easy. Uh, this one here is just going to give you some generic uh, steps to go through. You can download the PowerPoint and take a look at that if you want to. But we're going to assume you know how to create a project. Um, and we actually, I showed you already the project specifications in terms of um, the APIs. This is an interesting one, maps.jar, that is going to get loaded in if you download the API. But most of you are going to go com.google and use it from the from the internet essentially. <clears throat> you have to add the permissions. Um, in fact, here's a little bit more in terms of the permissions. Not only for the internet, this is another one. We, did, we actually added this one as well, access find location. So modifying, and all the permissions get added to the Android manifest. So you're clicking on the resource folder, you're looking at the project in, in the project itself, you're clicking on the manifest, you're displaying the uh, application information you're going to stick this one in here along with uh, the internet and anything else associated um, with the um, access permissions that you're going to want for the mapping. And then you're going to save the file. And uh, here's what the uh, add location manager to get the updates. In terms of um, the simulator, in this particular example, it's actually adding a location manager, which we didn't add. I did not have this in the um, example that I showed you a few minutes ago um, with the map. It wasn't using a location manager, but you can actually add one in, and um, it will be create the instance of the object will be created, and so it gets a better update. Actually, it uh, updates the maps um, simultaneously as they're being viewed, so you can get system services uh, to support the context, so the street names and things like that. And um, <clears throat> the location manager uh, keeps track of all of that. 
which is the, the reason why you put it in there. It will work without it. You don't actually need a location manager. Um, but here's more uh, source code for the my location listener. And as another kind of a, a small point to make, uh, the application I just showed you, we sent a long longitude and latitude through the debugger to the emulator, and we set the location. If you wanted to, uh, you would have to load on the um, the location manager with the location listener, and then as you move, you know, move through a building. Well, probably not going to show very much on the map, but as you move in a car, let's say for example down a street, your map would actually change your location. So those are the two objects that are used to um, modify your location position. Otherwise, it's not going to get the current location. If I took that map app that I just wrote and I put that on a phone and I'm out and about, it's not going to work because I need, it's, it's relying upon the information coming through the emulator from the debugger, which is why I didn't, I, I didn't put a uh, location manager in there. So you're going to want to put a location manager in there to find the location. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck manually having to tell it where I am. Here's the address. And <clears throat> so on the provider disabled, don't do anything. On the provider enabled, don't do anything. And these are stub classes, or, excuse me, stub methods put in. So to test it, you switch to the DDMS view, as we've seen. Find the location controls in the emulator and control tab, which is on the lower left-hand side. <coughs> Click on the GPX tag. Load the GPX. I actually didn't. I just mine was clicked on automatically, selected automatically. Locate and select the GPX file. Yeah, you don't really need to. And uh, click play to begin sending coordinates to the emulator. I just manually uh, sent it. You could actually set up a coordinate list, open up a file, and send coordinates, which would actually simulate somebody moving around to different locations. I was sending it one location at a time, essentially. <laughs> <clears throat> Here's our two lines, um, just as a review as well, the um, permissions for the internet, but here's the other line here that uses the library com.google.android.maps, I think it's put into here. So if you leave that out, it's not going to work actually, it won't enable the map view. And here's the map view to the, M to the main XML file, let's review again. <clears throat> Most of the examples you're going to see if you um, you know get an Android book or something, there's a couple of really good books that have been recently released as well, with a lot of good examples. Um, I've been uh, meaning to order a couple of them to evaluate them. Um, but you'll see it's going to say you know your your API key here. A lot of people actually just leave that alone. <laughs> if you do that, it's not going to work actually. It's, it, you'll you won't even get an error message. You just get a white screen is what you get. You don't get anything on the screen. The map will not show up. So you do have to cut and paste and put your key in there. <clears throat> we can modify uh, this particular simulator to use Google Maps. So I was actually kind of seeing if I can get this to come in a little clearer. And it's a little, still a little fuzzy, but um, we can change the location provider to use a different source. We can get from maps, since Google Maps, instead of just the maps. Um, we can change, well, the provider information. However, that, that screenshot's not so good, so I'll try and find another example for you in the future that uh, will do it. In fact, I have, don't have them with me, but I have more map examples that I've been uh, looking for. They're just on multiple computers. I have to find them. Uh, so To view the location on the map, <coughs> this is what we did, actually. And so... This was um, an old version of the simulation I just went through live a few minutes ago, uh, which basically the source code that's in this lecture is the same source code. And uh, what it's doing is just painting the map and putting the, the dot on the map and putting in the, the zoom controls. That's essentially what it's doing. So the internet is based on a layered architecture called the TCP IP stack. For those of you who are in the Java EE course, you've just been hearing about this a lot lately. So <coughs> we have, um, and it does follow, and it, this is the interesting concept as well. The um, Android phone is built on a Linux kernel. And the Linux kernel is built with threads as a basic processing. So every app, 
that you load up is loading in its own thread. And so you can have multi multiple running simultaneous threads that are using network facilities, that are using um, the camera, that are using all sorts of the different resources that are available on the phone as well. So in doing this, we can sort of think about this sort of like in a way of making a, a networked application. And if we think of that, the internet layers, what we're looking at is everything that's common with the OSI model. And what you're looking at is kind of a, an abridged version of it with a, with a TCP IP. Uh, so the application running on top, we still have UDP uh, as on the transport being used on the phone, actually. And uh, the phone actually supports UDP and TCP as a protocol. And so when we have connected to the internet, we're actually using UDP for those maps, or TCP, depending upon which features we're actually implementing. And um, <clears throat> we're actually running a networked application <laughs> that's connecting to a map service that is trans you know, that's transferring data in the direction of the phone to receive coordinate information, depending upon position changes. And so in terms of the application layer, <coughs> we have the protocols for HTTP, FTP, DNS, and we have the protocols for TCP, UDP, above it on the transport layer. On the internet layer, we have the IP. We have ping, actually, on the phone. In fact, you can go in the emulator to a terminal prompt, and you can type in, you know, uh, ping. And you can type in all of the Unix tools, most 99.9% .9 of all Unix tools and things, as, as well as uh, things that you've installed on the phone, and use it like a little baby uh, Unix box, essentially. Um, so in developing applications, it's kind of important to know that networking features actually exist. And um, you can actually create um, chat programs and things that go port to port, IP address and port that are bound by sockets, which is the same abstraction that you get in other operating systems. So it really truly is a Unix operating system that you're programming on. So. <coughs> in terms of the client-server communication, server machine is, is identified by the internet by some IP address and uh, we have daemons or which are processes running in the background which are listening all the time for connections requests from clients particular port numbers so you can actually put together a, you know a, a server on your phone actually and have other phones connect to it in terms of the networking protocols for you know sending messages for doing status updates and stuff like that, or even for running applications. So once a connection is request, request comes in to the server <coughs> on a given port, <coughs> the uh, corresponding daemon can choose to accept it or connect, uh, establish a connection, don't establish a connection, um, do whatever it really wants. And the application layer protocol <coughs> is typically used for the client to get uh, or send data to the server back and forth. So there's a little bit of information in terms of, at the end of this lecture, just, you know, in terms of making you aware of the fact that we do have networking capabilities on the Android phone in the, in the area, so. All right, what I wanted to do today was sort of um, get everybody up to speed on the assignments as well for this course, uh, because I haven't really talked about them yet. We've gone through... Um, you know, we're probably more around the halfway point. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this recording and start a new one and call it Assignments. So I don't bore people with...